Um, this is the second video log. Um, the original 3D printing machine is uh, working away. It's printing a new carriage for the next one that we're making, which is a Delta printer. It's based on the um, rock stock. Rostock. <laughs> Rostock uh, this is the Rostock Mini. Mini. <laughs> but the but it's a chunky these pieces version. have been scaled up. So it'll be interesting to see how that affects the geometry of this. Mm. Um, like, I think we've worked out the print area should be roughly well, uh, scale, scaling, it, scaling up was based on the size of the. Oh yeah, that's yeah. a good point because the six inch versions of this aren't very. Easily. Well, you did manage to get a six inch version in the no, end. No, there was one that was even smaller. Oh right, yeah. From Denmark, uh, but the actual six six inch one was just too expensive to get it imported, so there's yeah. almost no point. So basically, this is the best leap. The best available. <laughs> no, we both not. We both can't speak today, can we? Um. Yeah. No, I've been working too hard on money work, but um, this is the most available uh, heated bed, so therefore we wanted to fit this into the printer. And the print area should be roughly conical or an octagonal cone or something mm. up to this level here. So it's pretty decent. It's comparable to the rep wrap. Yeah. Although, I mean, who has the patience to print that high anyway? So, I mean, this is the, again, this is what we had available. It was a, just a continuous strip of belt, uh, which we then had to melt. melt together. Yeah, so we tried a few different glues, which are still drying, and then we got impatient and just melted it together. Uh, and it seemed to have, have worked really well. And we probably could build a jig um, so, to hold um, it in place and melt it a little bit more. Um, a little bit more accurately. And you used the heat gun to melt it. Oh. I, I assume the gap in the gaps here are actually deliberate, um, mm. just just to make sure that they do fit together. Mm. Um, but yeah, also I suppose you with three D printed parts, you're always going to get banding mm. on one of the on one of the axes. So it's just like obviously, if you had two banded surfaces which got which kind of meshed together, yeah. it would grind. So, so the, the washers, uh, you can't see them because they're also red, um, and the machine's red, um, but that makes a, a big difference. Um, and we're at the stage now where we're getting the circuitry done and just double checking everything. Uh, we have had a, a fire, one of the Pulolulus, what we call it. Maybe okay. if we learned to say what they're called, it would be helpful, but yeah, yeah for some reason, one of them spontaneously combusted. Yeah, it it yeah. caused us uh, a lot of nerves because obviously you don't want to yeah. then go and do exactly the same yeah. thing Again. which caused the fire. Yeah. But we uh, got bored, went ahead and did it anyway and yeah, it was yeah, fine. Yeah. So really it's uh, one of those errors which you, it's the worst sort of error which is one that disappears for no reason. Yeah, probably uh, come back the and The error surprises. which fixes itself is probably planning something. <laughs> so. I think that's uh, us. And then, yeah. how's the 3D scanning going? Um, zero. Zero scanning. <laughs> zero. Um, but um, the thing that you printed. Well, maybe it's worth actually showing. I guess we haven't mentioned this in the video log yet. And uh, we're obviously showing off our storage system as well. <laughs> um, yeah, this is the maker scanner. Um, oh, print's just finished. But anyway, yeah, this is the maker scanner. I don't want to uh, diss it exactly, but hmm. for some reason I, I haven't really had much luck with it. And I, yeah, before anyone says anything, I did put the laser here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it may be a problem. Uh, this is a laser that I tore out a, of a jigsaw, hmm. uh, and the jigsaw never really used the laser to align correctly anyway, so. Yeah. And that's not a good place to start from. But it could be that the laser was just not powerful enough to produce a high definition image or yeah. or something like that. But essentially all the images which I got with it had a very nice flat picture of the background and and managed to totally ignore the object that I was scanning in every situation. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean it's it's not obviously totally not working because the background came out yeah it's just it, it precisely deleted the object that I was scanning 
yeah. every single time. So, I mean, it's pretty much a non-starter. Um, I mean, as a computer programmer, I think what I really want to do is just write my own because I already worked out the equations that would be necessary to do this. And yeah. it may be that I'll find out what I was doing wrong with this as soon as I've written my own scanner. Yeah.